Hey, it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Liquify in Photoshop, specifically working with the face aware part of Liquify, where we're just honing in on facial features and it's kind of designed for just working with the face. Now this could be making slight adjustments to the image or drastic changes to the image. I want to show you what the tools do and let you decide how to use them. If you haven't already done so, please take a second to subscribe, click the little bell so you know when we have more content coming out. And so, if you're ready, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here's the sample image that we're going to use as we play around in Liquify. And um, just a little bit about, I guess, strategy when you're going for something like this. And there's a, a few different ways you can go when you're trying to Liquify, make changes to a person's face. One is if you're doing it to try and just kind of make small tweaks and you want it to be undetectable, almost like retouching when you're taking away um, blemishes and softening lines and things like that. If you're trying to make slight adjustments to features to kind of change or enhance uh, someone's appearance, um, then that's kind of one strategy. On the other end is if we're really trying to distort it and make it totally unrealistic just for more shock value or you're trying to make them into, you know, uh, cartoon type people, something along those lines. So I'm going to show you both ways. First time through, we're going to kind of do extreme changes just to show you how the tools work. And then we'll go through a second time and try and do it more realistically for something that you might do if it was um, something you were doing for yourself or a client or something like that. So before we jump in, one thing we want to do is we want to make this a smart object. So what we're going to do is just either right click or control click, convert to smart object. Once we have it as a smart object, that's basically allowing us to go back and work non-destructively. That we can take away the things we've done, the original layer is sitting there intact, and um, it's just definitely the smart way to work in Photoshop. And I've got another video on that that you can watch if you want to learn more about smart objects. But let's jump right in. So we've made it a smart object. We're coming up here to Filter, Liquify. Now, if it doesn't already d detect you have a face here, you want to come down here and click the little, uh, looks like a headshot, like a passport picture, the face tool right there. You want to make sure that's clicked. And then we're going to kind of run through all these options. Let me start here at the bottom that uh, I always make sure that I've got show image because without the image you're working blind and that really makes it daring. And uh, the face overlay kind of shows these little guides that so you know what you're doing. Um, I don't like having um, like the mesh on. That to me just makes it too hard to see the image. I want to see what I'm doing. So those are the two things. It's, it's got show mask already on here, but uh, we're not working with a mask right now. So those are my viewing options that I've got set, but let's come up here and start running through some of these things. Now, basically going to be doing all of these things, almost everything that you can do over here with these little um, lines and dots can be done over here in the sliders. There's a couple of things in sliders that you can't do over here, but it's basically two different ways of working. Uh, basically what this thing does, these little parentheses around the face tells us this is the face we're working on. If there's two people in the image, you can come up here to select face and it'll say face one, face two. That way you can switch back and forth between other people. And then we're going to work through some of these items here and um, show you what all they do. When we get in on the eye, you'll see we've got three dots and a diamond. And when you hover over them, it'll tell you what, what you're basically doing. You've got uh, eye height like this. And again, we're going to go super extreme so that uh, you can see exactly what it is we're doing. Now before we jump in too far, one thing you want to do is click on these little uh, links to link both sides together. That way when we make this one larger, this one we don't have to try and figure out how big it is. It'll automatically do the other one and they will match. So um, let's go ahead and make sure those are all clicked. So we've taken a look at the height there. Right here is your size. That is the overall size. We can make them smaller, bigger. We'll go bigger. Right here is the width. There you go. And that's just more height. 
There you go. You can also, with this little dotted line here, angle them. Kind of make them almost look like a bug or an alien or something. So those are your basic eye features. There's another one over here that there doesn't appear to be anything here to, to do that with, and that's eye distance. And basically that will move them farther apart or closer in. We're going to go farther apart, kind of stick with our alien appearance that we're building. So the nose. One thing you can do is kind of just grab here in the middle and move it all the way around, up and down, left and right. Um, one thing you can do here is work on your height. What happened? There we go. Just kind of stretching it shorter. We'll make it shorter. And then the width. Well, let's go thinner. The smile. Uh, you can add more smile, take away smile. Let's take away the smile. And we can use the upper lip, lower lip. And again, you've got them all over here. Upper lip, you can just slide it and watch what happens. I like working with these better because then I'm already looking at the area that I'm working with. Uh, you've got mouth height here, which kind of separates the lips, which kind of looks weird, but um, you can do it to kind of close down the lips. That looks kind of interesting. All right, so then the overall shape of the face. Up here we can pull the forehead up or down. Let's go down. Can narrow in the face, make him put on weight. Get skinny. Let's go wide. The jaw and the chin. All right, I think that works. Let's bring in the jaw and I kind of like him. Stick with our alien theme here. Okay, so once we've done all these, we just hit OK. And here he is. He's distorted, looks terrible, kind of looks like a space alien. Um, but we've got over here, because we've set it up this way, one, we can just turn the effect off and on by turning off and on the smart filter and or specifically the liquify or we can double click on liquify and come back in and start over with a lot of these and kind of undo some of the things that we did so that's basically how that works showing you the tools kind of to extremes I'm gonna drag this down throw it away and we're going to start over using a fresh one and work on doing some more minor tweaks. So again, we're going to go up to Filter Liquify. Now, a couple of things to think about when you're making adjustments like this, whether it's to yourself or an image of someone else, is do you even want to make adjustments like this? You know, there's certainly an argument for not wanting to make changes to somebody, but let's just say for the sake of argument that uh, you've got someone who's, I don't know, self-conscious about their eyes and they wish their eyes were bigger, or you're just trying to go for a certain type of look. Maybe you photograph them in a way that you made their nose look bigger than it was, or you're trying to make that smaller, or adjusting a smile. Things like that is where I think this would come in most handy. And so the thing you're gonna always wanna do is one, always click here, and link them because you do not want to adjust one thing and not the other. The only exception to that would be, and I'm gonna turn them back off, is if you look and you say, um, sometimes you get someone who's squinting with one of their eyes, you can come over here and just affect the, the one eye and make it a little bit bigger or something like that. That's not really the case in this image, but sometimes you'll have someone who's got a little bit of a squint. If you want to work on one eye like that, that's what you would do. But otherwise, we're going to link these up. And again, you could just do minor tweaks. It's always got to be minor because you want it to be one of those things where people see it and we want to try and make him look different or change some things but not to the point that it doesn't look like him anymore and what I'm going to do here is we're going to change him up some um, but more just so we can see the kind of things that this tool can do so make eyes a little bit bigger let's come in here and um, maybe give him a little bigger nose a little wider but shorter I don't know we're just kind of guessing here let's make him a little bit bigger Bring out his jaw a little bit, maybe a little less forehead, kind of like that. So all these tweaks, you're just kind of dragging, bringing it in. I kind of like leaving that down. Maybe give a hair more smile. The smile you got to be careful with because it's really easy to make it look weird. 
um, has been my experience. Like, I don't think that looks realistic at all. So uh, you got to be careful with the smile. But um, giving it just a little bit of a tweak um, can work. So there, we've made some changes. And if you look at this, it doesn't look like we've made a lot of changes. Let's hit OK. Get back out here. If you look at it this way, it doesn't look like we've made any changes. If someone saw this on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, nobody would think that this had been altered in any way. Um, it looks just like a regular person. But we can turn that filter off and on. You can see it really looks drastically different from the original guy. But that's basically what you're shooting for, is something that still looks totally realistic. You can't see what you've done. You know, Normally, you would never make these kind of adjustments to a person. It's, it's way too much. Uh, it starts to not look like them, as you can see. And that just kind of warns you that even if you think you're only making slight changes, you know, when we went in there, we only made the eyes a little bigger, a little change to the nose, pulled down the forehead a little bit. We didn't make a ton of changes, but they really add up to a drastically different look. So be really careful with what you do, and it's always a good idea, especially with something like this, to save it, maybe come back the next day and look at it and decide if you want to pull some of those back a little bit and not apply as much of an effect as you did originally. Because, uh, like I said, it's really easy to overdo it. But that's just kind of a look at how the tool works. What you want to do with it is totally up to you, whether it's minor tweaks just to change an appearance or if you want to go ahead and do drastic things. You've got the power to do it there in Liquify using that face tool, and um, hopefully that kind of helps to explain it a little bit for you. So there you have it, the basics of the Liquify tool. It really can do some cool things to make adjustments to facial features or really distort things to almost cartoon-like features. It really can be a powerful tool, but it's really easy to overuse. What do you think? Do you use Liquify in your workflow? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Also, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know that as well. I'm happy to help. So until next week, I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.